Coming up, I will discuss why you must do these things to be successful on LinkedIn. Find out what I learned from teaching LinkedIn to more than 500 people. Let's get started. If you're new here, my name is Matthew Royce. I am a knowledge enthusiast. The most professional social media network is LinkedIn. The social media platform lets you share your experience, skills, and qualifications with future employers. It also helps you build and interact with your professional network and grow your personal brand as a professional. I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn. It's a great place to learn, interact with your network, and build your story. Yes, an up-to-date LinkedIn profile can help you find your next job but it is more than that. LinkedIn has evolved since it was launched in May 2003. LinkedIn is one of the world's largest professional networks on the internet and for a good reason. I have taught LinkedIn to more than 500 people during my marketing career, including students at Duke University. I have found that they need to do three main things, update their LinkedIn profile, learn how to use LinkedIn better, and shape their personal brand. Often, the conversation with my colleagues goes in the direction where they start asking themselves questions such as, how can I incorporate LinkedIn into my daily work responsibilities? Where do I get more business value from it? How do I maximize my time on it. Here's what I learned from teaching LinkedIn to my colleagues and what I found most people need to do on LinkedIn to use it more successfully. Number one, get the attention of your audience. As you develop and polish your LinkedIn profile, it's essential to understand who will read it. It will most likely be your professional network, potential customers, and recruiters in your industry. It's essential to look at other people's LinkedIn profiles. Dust off your resume so you can add your career experiences to your profile. Also, it's critical to find out how others are using LinkedIn. Look for people who you admire and used to work with. What experiences are they highlighting on LinkedIn? What qualities shine through on their profile? What technical skills are they adding to their LinkedIn profile? What kind of story are they telling? How many personal stories are they sharing? How often do they use LinkedIn? Are they posting every day or every once in a while? To get your audience attention, you must know and understand your audience. Find out how they present themselves on LinkedIn. Discover what words they use to describe themselves. Number two, master your keywords and avoid buzzwords. Next, I have found that people need to know the keywords they want to use and put them in their headline, summary, experience, and skills sections. It's essential not to stuff keywords, but use proven power words that highlight what you have accomplished in your career. Some proven power words include change, which means accelerated, advocated, and built. Results, which is awarded, completed, and decreased. People, which is brokered, coached, and collaborate. Managerial, which is anticipated, avoided, and controlled. These power words or essential keywords help you stand out from the crowd. They allow you to communicate your value and improve your personal brand. The more density you have of specific terms and keywords, the higher in the search results you go when recruiters are looking for people like you. If you need help with the right words, look at job descriptions and see what keywords they use. Look at the LinkedIn profile for people with the jobs you want. See what keywords they use on their LinkedIn profile. Ensure you don't use too many buzzwords with your keywords. Overused buzzwords include leverage, synergies, innovation, driven, hardworking, passionate, expert, skilled, successful, and motivated. Ask yourself if a keyword or phrase has a synonym. Suppose it doesn't, then think about the, what the buzzword really means. What does innovative really mean? Do you have numbers to back up what innovation means, such as launching 10 new products? Number three, focus on the top sections of your profile first. We are all busy and love to scan things instead of reading them. People don't read every word of your LinkedIn profile. Most readers check your profile, look at the logo of companies you have worked at, and read the first and last sentence of a paragraph. It's essential to hook your audience the minute they first land on your LinkedIn profile. Include your most important skills, experiences, stories, and qualities higher up in your profile. This means paying attention to your background image, profile picture, headline, about section, and experience section. Often I saw that my colleagues didn't link their experience to the right company. I also noticed that many colleagues didn't have an about section. Your LinkedIn profile is your new business card. Ensure you are marketing yourself so you don't have your top sections blank or sparse with information. LinkedIn's algorithm rewards you with a complete profile, so ensure you are all-star of your profile. 
LinkedIn assigns different strengths to profiles. So if you want to appear higher in search, complete your entire LinkedIn profile. Ensure you have all of your necessary information, such as name, job title, current company, location, and industry. That's another thing that I saw with my colleagues that they didn't do correctly. They didn't use the correct industry or place where they live. Also, many of my colleagues have professional credentials or designations such as MA, MD, JD, MBA, PhD, CFP, and CPA after their names. You don't need them. Keep your name clean and concise. Number four, secure your custom URL. This is the most common thing I found when teaching my colleagues about LinkedIn. They didn't have their custom LinkedIn profile URL. It's essential to get this as soon as possible and aim to have your full name with nothing else. If you have a common name, sorry John Smith, resort to a slight modification such as adding a word that means something to you such as a middle initial, industry topic, the current company you work at, or critical certifications. This is the place where you can use your professional credentials not in your name. Number five, Add a background photo. When talking to my colleagues, I often see a blank banner above their profile picture. This background or cover photo is one of the first things you see on your profile. It's essential to make a good impression. What I've done with companies I've worked at is work with our graphic design team to create a company branded background photo and email it to my colleagues to upload and have them follow these instructions. If you're in marketing, this is an excellent opportunity to help you promote your brand to future customers. If your company doesn't provide a background photo, you can design your own using tools like Canva. Canva. They have a free LinkedIn banner template. When you design your own, you can add your own personal website URL, your strengths, the services you offer, a photo of you speaking at an event. You can find free stock photos on Unsplash or Pixels. You can even add a famous quote. Whatever you choose, make sure it is professional. LinkedIn is not Facebook. Number six, upload a professional profile picture. According to LinkedIn, members with profile photos can receive up to 21 times more views than those without a photo. You don't need a professional photographer to have a professional headshot. You can use your iPhone or Android to take a high resolution photo, ensure your picture is clear and crisp. Make sure you had, don't have a distracting background in your photo, so I encourage you to take the photo next to a blank white wall. The debate now is whether your profile photo should be casual or formal. LinkedIn is a social media outlet designed for business and career networking, yet LinkedIn doesn't mention the words formal or casual in their 10 tips for picking the right LinkedIn profile picture. It's your call on what type of photo works best for you. Aim for your face to take up about 60% of the image once it's cropped. Number seven, write a headline that goes beyond your job title. Your headline on LinkedIn is more than just your job title. When teaching my colleagues, I find they default to their job titles for their headline. I encourage them to use this headline space to communicate the core of who they are as a professional and the value they provide as a company or their audience. Number eight, write a killer about section. The about section always needs work, I find, with my colleagues. This is one of the biggest takeaways. You can show your personality and share your career story in this section. Think about this as your executive summary section on your resume. This section doesn't need to be complicated. Both are good reads. The about section is basically your career elevator pitch in written form. Remember, LinkedIn is not your resume, so make sure you're always writing it in first person. Use this section to introduce yourself, highlight your critical skills and experiences, highlight your achievements, and discuss who you are outside of work. Number nine, show off your best work in the features section. Under your about section is a features section. This is where you can add links to your profile about articles or blog posts you have written, or videos that you've been interviewed in, or samples of your career work. This section is an excellent place for show and tell, where you can show off your skills, perspectives, and personal brand in action. LinkedIn puts this section up top, so take advantage of it. A majority of the colleagues I taught didn't use this section, so I encourage you to do so. Number 10, write accomplished driven descriptions. In your experience section, you can approach your LinkedIn profile like your resume. Rather than just listing your job responsibilities, detail your accomplishments. LinkedIn doesn't like bullet points, so if you must bring them over from Microsoft Word. Highlight three to five top accomplishments from your past job. It's crucial to include numbers so they are more appealing. What I found teaching my colleagues is their past job descriptions are blank, and this is a missed opportunity. I also encourage my colleagues to add links, images, videos, and files under their jobs. It's a perfect opportunity to show off. Your resume and LinkedIn profile should mostly match. 
Your resume and LinkedIn profile don't have to be precisely the same, but the past positions, companies, degrees, and certifications should match. My colleagues often ask if they should put the same, and I say mostly because of the past jobs, and LinkedIn can be viewed as today's online resume. I also encourage my colleagues to add their LinkedIn profile URL to their resumes and hyperlink them. This can help you boost the credibility of your resume, and recruiters like to search your social media profiles to get a more well-rounded view of yourself. Number 12, add Add certifications, volunteer, and language sections. While teaching my colleagues, they usually forgot about adding their certifications, mentioning they are a mentor, including their volunteer participation, and listing the different languages they can speak. Adding this information is a great way to showcase what makes you unique and shows others you're more than just a job title. Number 13, add your skills. My colleagues don't pay enough attention to this area in their profiles. LinkedIn gives you the ability to add up to 50 skills. I often see people will add about half of that. You can also get your network to vouch for your abilities by endorsing your skills. Number 14, pay it forward with LinkedIn recommendations. Take a proactive approach to endorsements by paying it forward with a recommendation. With a handy template, you won't have the problem of writing a recommendation from scratch. I often see my colleagues that they have challenges with two main things. First, they haven't received or given recommendations. Second, they have received more recommendations than they have given. To get a recommendation, give one first. Colleagues are more likely to return the favor. It's also an underutilized best practice to help people in your professional network. Number 15, check your profile settings. If you're looking for a job, adjust your profile settings to let recruiters know you're looking for work. If you have a job and want a new one, you can tweak your settings to hide this info. Control who can see your updates and who can see your profile photo. Number 16, request connections thoughtfully. LinkedIn is an excellent place to network. However, I've seen many people become spammy, especially with LinkedIn requests to connect. An excellent place to start is by connecting with people you already know. Many people are sending LinkedIn connection requests to people they don't know. For example, I recommend to my colleagues they only accept connection requests with people they have talked to on the phone, via Teams or Zoom, or met in person. When you send a connection request, do it thoughtfully by including a note and personalizing the connection request with the context of how you both met. Number 17, take advantage of LinkedIn learning. One of the things most people don't know about LinkedIn is that they can now provide learning modules so that you can learn new skills. LinkedIn learning is a subsidiary of LinkedIn that provides video courses by industry experts. Number 18, share articles. As a member of LinkedIn, you can write posts and even articles on the platform. It's essential to share articles on LinkedIn so you stay top of mind with with your professional network. When working with my colleagues, this is the number one thing I recommend they do on LinkedIn. Use tools such as Buffer or Hootsuite to share articles via LinkedIn. Sharing articles show that you are a content curator. Sharing articles shows your network that you know what's happening in your field. You can show off your writing skills via LinkedIn Publisher, which allows members to write, edit, and share articles on LinkedIn. You can also like and comment if you don't want to share or write articles. Number 19, join LinkedIn Group. Another cool part of LinkedIn is LinkedIn Groups. You can find like-minded professionals in your job or industry. It gives you a forum for discussing relevant topics and meeting new people. Some LinkedIn groups may review your request to join or ask for additional information to ensure you are meeting their membership criteria. Number 20, use LinkedIn when you are not job searching. One of the biggest things I learned from teaching my colleagues is that most people think LinkedIn is a place to look for new jobs. Yes, you can do that on LinkedIn, but this social media platform allows you to build your professional network and polish your personal brand before you land your next job. Become an active user and don't abandon LinkedIn until the next time you apply for a job. When you actively use LinkedIn, you'll grow your network, become more visible to your existing network, and learn more about how you can grow your career. LinkedIn can help you uncover opportunities you didn't know existed. Okay, let's bring it all together. First, if you like what you saw here, please hit the subscribe button below. To have the opportunity to teach my colleagues how to use LinkedIn better is a blessing. I could work at LinkedIn one day based on what I learned from teaching my colleagues. I hope you found these tips valuable. The bottom line is you must give your LinkedIn profile care and feeding. Be consistent. Update your LinkedIn profile once a month and don't forget to use LinkedIn when you're not job searching. Thank you for watching. Until next time.